they're profiting monetarily too. They'll get an up in donations for this shit. Same streets in the wake of Breonna Taylor's death in 2020, demanding justice for the young woman killed during a botched LMPD raid. Even if we did do things wrong, that does not mean that police get to execute us whenever they please. So we will continue to be in these streets because black lives always matter. And not long after a group of pastors, community leaders, and activists met at Jefferson Square Park. To- what the fuck is wrong with this? That's your community leaders. Your community is in trouble. What's wrong with this thing? I can't even call her a person. That's a, she's a thing. She's like, what is she like? Hawaiian or fucking Filipinos? What is she like? What is this thing? Yeah, she looks like some kind of a South Asian island. Yeah, yeah but she doesn't have any accent. So she was born here. And her parents were probably born. She has no accent. This, what is this? What is this? I'm perplexed. I'm like, a, I'm like a scientist. I'm trying to figure out what is this thing here. Even if we did do things wrong, that does not mean that police get to execute us whenever they please. So we will continue to be in these streets because black lives always matter. And not long after, a group of pastors, community leaders, and activists met at Jefferson Square Park to pray for the family of Tyree Nichols. The group also called for peace in the metro and in cities all around the country after what happened in Memphis. We're one human race. One human race. This can happen to any one of us. It has. It has. And it has to stop. People who have experienced and been impacted by violence also had the opportunity to share their stories at today's rally. These are some sick puppies, man. I mean, like, I mean, like, these are some sick motherfuckers, man. Well, what, what's crazy is the amount of people that believe in them and that believe that they're totally honest and... This has nothing to do with a money grab or, or politics. Right. Even after the whole BLM debacle. Well, it's, it's easier. It's easier to go along with go along with, with the deception because once you because you, if you actually confronted it for what it truly is, that means you have to that means you have to act. You have to face the truth and act. And that's and that's far and that, and that also takes admitting that you were wrong. And admitting that you got duped. And they don't want to do that. That that takes too much character. New details tonight about the city's latest homicide victim. Commonwealth Theater Center posted on its website, Kenny Mayer was killed Thursday afternoon on Cooper Street. That's in the Irish Hill neighborhood, right outside their facility. According to his obituary, Mayer was 51 and worked maintenance. The statement called him a beloved member of the administrative staff and says he lost his life due to a senseless act of gun violence near the building. They call the loss a tragedy. So far, no arrests have been made. Damn. They... There's no descriptions anymore <laughs> yeah. well, of who to look it. out for, you know. <laughs> it's bizarre, man. Um... I seriously, I think they don't want a lot of these caught, honestly. People working across the street from where a man was shot to death in the Irish Hill neighborhood say they're shocked. Gladys Batista explains the deadly violence isn't something they'd expect in that neighborhood. A busy night at Irish Hill's Chow Restaurante cut short by the sound of gunfire Thursday afternoon. Everybody heard it. Some people dropped to the floor. Some people went to hide in the bathroom. It was very, very loud and clear. Channing Klein has worked at Chow Restaurante for five years. She says what happened still didn't register, even after seeing a man laying on the ground right across the street. It's not anything I would have ever expected to happen like that. No, gunshot would have never crossed my mind. When you see somebody on the ground like that, my mind doesn't go, oh, somebody's been shot. LMPD says officers responded to a report of a shooting on Cooper Street just before 4 p.m. And when they got there, they found a man who had been shot, even though Klein said people rushed to help the man. The first person made it across the block over here to help the man. So it's going to be hard for him today. 
Police say he died at the scene. Investigators shut down the block for hours as they combed for evidence. You no, know, everybody tried to stay out of the way, but you know, yeah, we closed for dinner because you know everyone was a little traumatized from witnessing the event. And then you know, you want to stay out of the way. You and got let five the o'clock shadow. Officers do their job. Yeah. But on Friday, there are reminders of what yeah, happened. It's tough once they shave that stuff. See, she she should have got that shit plucked. I think she shaved it. And once you're a woman, if you shave it, you're fucked for life. Let the police officers do their job. But on Friday, there are reminders of what happened. Outside, a headlight busted out. There's definitely a hole inside of the building. And inside... Yeah, everybody's going to be a little bit on edge today, for sure. Kitchen makes a lot of loud noises. Somebody drops an aluminum pan on the floor. It's going to be a little testy today. So we'll see. You know, it's just... Hope we can all... She seems like a nice woman, man. I'm not going to wait for her. She seems like a nice woman, man. Uh... Still, no, no description. No. <laughs> she saw it. She didn't even go to school. Evil mom is looking for answers tonight, two months after she her son was gone. <laughs> oh, here, here goes, here comes the life turned around before the incident. <laughs> Evil mom is looking for answers tonight, two months after her son was gunned down in the Taylor Berry neighborhood. WLKY's Randall Cam talked with the grieving mother just a short time ago. Randall? Well, Vicki, this was a tough interview, and it's going to be a hard one to watch. A mom distraught and looking for someone to explain why her son was shot and killed. It happened the day after Thanksgiving in the 3100 block of Taylor Boulevard. 52-year-old Corey Parker of Louisville shot multiple times and pronounced dead at the scene. They beat him like a dog. And then he danced like a dog. He didn't deserve that. I know he's my son and he wasn't perfect. But I Okay, so he wasn't perfect. So some person pointed me that you weren't per when some person say he wasn't perfect, they mean he was close to being a fucking like he was, what's the opposite of perfect? Is there opposite of perfect? Whatever the opposite of perfect was, that he he was that. Broken. Whatever some person says, he uh, wasn't perfect. Well, that and I mean, yeah, man, I'm glad I'm glad you made that move at fifty to turn your fucking life around. Right. Serve that. I know he's my son and he wasn't perfect, but I don't think nobody's child deserves it. Barbara Petty says her son battled drug problems. Life around by enrolling in culinary school. His dream. Oh. Turn his life around by enrolling in culinary school. His dream was to open his own restaurant. But that dream died last November. Who shot him? Oh, he, he was a little open of his own restaurant. Okay. Last November. Who shot and killed Corey Parker? That's the answer Barbara Perry wants, but can't get. She tells us she's frustrated with the police investigation. It just seems like that they're just brushing everything under the rug. And I want the rug put back. And I want the dust swept out because I feel like we're losing too many of our children out here. We've reached out to Louisville police. He's 50 though, well, whatever. For clarification as to whether an active investigation is continuing or if the case is closed. When we find out, we'll bring that information to you. Corey Parker leaves behind five children and six grandchildren. It he lived a full life. He, he was a fucking degenerate, probably a degenerate criminal, a Floyd. This probably was a Floyd. He lived, what? Five years longer than Floyd. He looked like he was a George Floyd. You know, that type of mold cut cut out of the George Floyd cloth. And he lived to be 50 and he got a bunch of grandkids and kids. And and the idea that there's some conspiracy of the police department to hide something. He got one, man. That guy won. Um, he got fucking one, man. Um, he got one. Salute to that guy, man. He had a great life, man. 
Um, let's see, the, 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 people working across the that guy in, in, in like, like he won, man. He lived in America. He, he had a great life. Fifty years. Did all the drugs he wanted to do. Committed all the crimes he wanted. Had all the sex he wanted. Like at some point, of kids, grandkids. Yeah, at some point, man. Like we gotta, we gotta appreciate. And I mean, that goes for me too. I gotta appreciate what I got too. You don't have oh, to appreciate what we got. Look, look how racist and horrible of a country we have when a complete degenerate can live a life like that. <laughs> I mean, like, come on, man. Kentucky State Police are revealing new details about the relationship between a Florida man and a woman whose body was found after a high-speed chase. David Reed was arrested last week after a multi-county chase on I-75. There's another one. This guy's, a, guy's got a great life. Look who this guy's got a great life. David Reed was arrested last week after a multi-county chase on I-75 that ended in Laurel County. The body of 53-year-old Rachel Carter was found in a plastic bin in the back of his SUV. During a court hearing, investigators said the two had been dating and that Reed... Yo, this guy's... This guy's dating this woman, man. Yo, yo. There's nothing to complain about. Yeah, he killed her. And all he gets to do is fucking sit around and play dominoes and fucking watch old movies on fucking AMC for the next fucking 20, 30 years till he dies of like old age in fucking prison. Oh, don't don't forget about the uh the prison cell cuisine he will eat. Yeah, exactly. He'll be eating fucking, he'll get three squares and he'll get all the little hookups and shit. The little fucking cuisines they make out of the fucking hot Doritos and shit and, and fucking honey buns and shit. But aside from that, he's going to get three square meals a day. He'll be, he'll get heat protected. And this woman's dead. And trust me, he outkicked his coverage with this one, man. Guy out kicked his coverage. <laughs> Yo, these guys are great lives, man. That fucking guy was dating this woman. That ended in Laurel County. The body of 53-year-old Rachel Carter was found in a plastic bin in the back of his SUV. During a court hearing, investigators said the two had been dating and that Reed killed her during an argument at a motel near the interstate. He advised it, it stemmed from an argument between the two um, due to Rachel um, finding out that he was possibly seeing another female. Reed is charged. He was cheating. <laughs> he had her and a side piece. That guy was cheating on this woman. This guy was cheating on his woman. And then when she confronted him about it, he killed her. Oh, this could only happen in the most racist country <laughs> in the world. And I bet you this guy's rap sheet is longer than the previous guys. Listen, man, I want to make sure that I... That I fucking... Appreciate my life, man. Gun violence has claimed six lives in Louisville just days into the new year. One of those victims was a founding member of the musical group Lincoln Bridge. WLKY Shaquille Lord is here to share where he is being or how he's being remembered tonight. Shaq? Yeah, Vicky, 43-year-old Jeremiah Buckner was known as Echo. He was one-fourth of the original Lincoln Bridge music group there out of West Louisville. Now, he worked hard. He loved West Louisville and stood against gun, gun violence. That's why his friends tell me his death is still hard to process. Somewhere over the rainbow. All four members of Lincoln Bridge rose to... What do you think, man? How you like it, man? What are we thinking? What are we what are we what are we thinking about this this what, what are we doing with that? Huh? Thumbs up or thumbs down on that, man? Oh, 
what was the movie uh, Wesley Snipes was in about the they took over the whole block in New York? New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, that's this reminds me of is that scene out in front of <laughs> the corridor apartments in New Jack City. What we doing, man? I nation, man. I need y'all to. You think I should collab with them, man? Should I collab with these guys, man? The process. Somewhere over the rainbow. All four members of Lincoln Bridge rose to fame together. We cried together. We uh, triumphed together. We achieved some things that were impossible at our age together. Over the rainbow. Montre Davis, Rome Kimbrough, Sean China Lacey, and Jeremiah Buckner, known as Echo, formed the original Lincoln Bridge. Echo is described as the one who held the band together. The work ethic and the drive. Yeah. And so if, if, if you didn't work on that, he would question your seriousness. So he was a very hard worker. But now there's a new reality, one without the 43-year-old. Police say he was shot and killed Tuesday afternoon on Village West Drive in the Russell neighborhood. He stood for peace and he stood against gun violence. To have him die so tragically like this, like I said, is bizarre and insane. The loss comes as a shock to everyone who knew him. He didn't drink, smoke, party. He wasn't with the wrong people. He didn't associate, didn't believe in that. He, you know, in... It, this is senseless. It doesn't make sense. Even after Echo left the group to pursue other opportunities, the other members say he always kept in touch with his brothers and rooted for them from a distance. It's a shame, you know, it took this for for me to say that that boy was the heart and soul mm -hmm. of Lincoln Bridge. And as they grasp with this new reality, China says Echo's impact will forever be felt. We're going to keep going. We want everyone to know that uh, his legacy will live on. Certainly heartbreaking. Now, no arrests have been made in this case. If you have any information that can help investigators, call the anonymous tip line. That number is 574-LMPD. On that note, guys, man, peace out, man. See you guys. It may take tomorrow off traveling. Or I may do a show. I don't know. But uh, most likely I'm taking tomorrow off. Peace out, man. Peace out. Y'all have a good night.